Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. It was caught on camera, a customer stealing cash right off the counter at a Down River restaurant and then just calmly walking out. He was already in trouble with the law and what he posted on social media got him busted by the feds. And taking a look outside, we're in for a warm and sunny day, but we could see possible severe weather sometime tonight. Andrew has your full forecast coming up. Good morning. It's 6 o'clock. I'm Priya Mann. And I'm Grant Herms. Thanks for joining us here this morning at Local 4 News Today. Priya, it was so nice out the last couple of days. I know it was a little cold and like maybe a little rainy in the morning, but I was really hoping that this weekend we would stay away from some of those showers. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. But you are tracking some potential severe weather, but that's later on. That's right. That's mainly during the nighttime hours. During the day, we are getting the sunshine that we crave, including from yesterday. We're looking at mostly sunny skies this morning and mostly to partly sunny skies this afternoon. It gets warmer. I mean, this is going to be the warmest day of the week with temperatures that will be in the upper 70s to near 80. We might see some scattered showers as early as 8 or 9 o'clock this evening, but the heavier shower or thunderstorm activity occurs closer to midnight and certainly afterward. Currently, we have temperatures that are in the 50s right now. Some 40s are out there, like 48 in Sandusky, but we have 53 for our friends in Pontiac, 56 degrees over in Monroe. Good-looking shot of downtown Detroit with 57 degrees over at Metro Airport, a breeze out of the northeast at around 6 miles per hour. There are those showers and storms well to our west for now in Illinois and also Wisconsin, even in northern portions of the lower peninsula. That is going to move to our north, but we're looking at that area to the west moving over us as we get closer to sunset and afterward. We'll talk more about that severe threat overnight because we could see some heavy downpours, even some gusty winds before Sunday morning is over with. We'll talk more about that in your complete weekend forecast in minutes. All right, thanks, Andrew. Well, Detroit police are asking everyone to keep an eye out for a missing two-year-old boy. Take a good look here at your screen. His name is Carson Hayes. Police say his mother took him from his home on West Chicago on Tuesday, and the boy hasn't been seen since. She does not have custody. Her name is Asia Sturgis, and she may be driving a blue 2019 Nissan Altima with a New Hampshire plate 4576271. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. Time now 602 and a thief targeted a Down River restaurant knowing exactly what he was doing and he walked away with a handful of cash. Jason Colthorpe has more on who the police are now looking for. This guy was at the front of the restaurant taking out some carry out. So he's up by the hostess station, but it's also where the employees kept their personal items. And when no one was looking, he swiped one server's tips and then went back for her wallet, which had cash her license and her credit cards. They're providing for families all for tips and to do something like that. That's just a terrible thing to do. Surveillance from August 30th at the popular wine dot restaurant Whiskey's on the Water shows a man with a carry out carrying something extra out, namely a waitress's book full of tips. And then he goes back for her wallet. Police are hoping to ID this guy. Disgusting. Oh, man. Here and here. Whiskey's didn't want to comment on camera, but some of its loyal customers shared their displeasure with someone oh, wow. stealing from a server. It's horrible. I'm told the man is not a regular and he paid with cash. That was her livelihood that you're taking from. Who knows that waitress's situation, where she's coming from? But Whiskey's isn't letting it go. Employees have been doing their own detective work to help police track down this tip thief. So bad for her. Just, you know, it's unfortunately it's the times we're living in. Everyone's, you know, trying to get money, trying to make it through. That honestly is a terrible thing to do. These waitresses, they work very hard. Sometimes they barely even get tips. They have families to support. And to do something like that, that just show how sorry some people can be. And that's just wrong. It's just wrong. Don't do that. Again, this happened last Sunday about 6.30 in the evening. Uh, police say if you recognize the guy in this video, they'd sure like to hear from you. Give Wyandotte Police a call. We're in Wyandotte. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. A Detroit man is facing new charges, and it all started with what federal agents saw on his Instagram posts. Our Mar McDonald has more on how agents use this man's Instagram in a criminal complaint against him. You know, there's oversharing on social media, and then there's oversharing on social media that lands the ATF knocking on your door. 
Jeremy Massey is already in hot water with the law. He has two outstanding court cases, one in Macomb and one in Oakland for a list of felonies, including unarmed robbery, obstructing a police officer, leaving the scene of an accident. It's just a sample. ATF was monitoring Massey's Instagram, which went by various names, including East Baby Slim. On that account, Massey is seen posing, pointing, and sleeping with a Glock, as well as a series of photos showing his marijuana habit, all of which led to a search warrant of his Detroit home, where agents found the Glock after he ran out the back door. He's now facing criminal charges of being in possession of a firearm while under indictment, as well as unlawful user of a controlled substance in possession of a firearm. So now Massey has two federal charges and two upcoming trials, both in Macomb and Oakland counties. We're downtown at the federal courthouse. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Time now is 606 and the state of Michigan is reporting 1,313 new cases of the coronavirus, the highest daily count of new cases since late April. We are learning though that not all of those cases are from the past 24 hours. The Oakland County Health Department says a lab that had not previously been reporting positive cases released 204 confirmed cases to the county with some of those going back to August 11th. In other headlines, Dr. Anthony Fauci now believes it could be the end of 2021 before life gets back to how it was before COVID-19. He says while a vaccine will certainly help, it won't be available to everyone immediately. Wow, end of 2021. Mm. A new CDC report suggests small children can transmit the virus. 12 kids acquired COVID in child care centers in Utah and then went on to spread it to parents and siblings. The new study even found an eight month old baby can still spread the virus despite not getting severely sick from COVID-19. Warren police hope surveillance video will lead to an arrest in a hate crime investigation. Home surveillance video from Thursday night shows an unarmed man lurking around the Hall family's home near 11 Mile and Hoover. Moments later, he shoots at the house. It's the second time this week shots were fired in that direction, and it's the latest in a series of attacks that include a rock thrown through a window, slashed tires, and messages of hate written on their cars. The family believes they're being harassed because of a Black Lives Matter sign in their window. We don't know why this person keeps terrorizing us um, and singling us out. The only difference from our house, from everybody else's, is that we have a Black Lives Matter sign in our window. Police are offering a $3,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. It's been a big week of campaigning in Michigan in the race for president. Now that both former Vice President Joe Biden and President Donald Trump have made their stops here, we took a look at a few of the comments they made about manufacturing in our state and ran them through our trust index. The first one is a claim that the president said a few times that he added a lot of auto plants both here in Michigan and around the country. We're calling this one false. Before the virus, my administration added over 200 new auto and auto parts plants in 2007. How about 200? I didn't know that. The president has been making up the number of auto plants so far in Michigan. Only the Jeep plant in Detroit was created during his term here in Michigan, and several companies have said they would add employees, but no new factories. Next, we'll look at a pair of job claims from former Vice President Joe Biden. Our economy's down 4.7 million jobs since he took office. 4.7. This one is true, according to the Department of Labor, which just released the figures for August last week. Now, while nearly 20,000 auto manufacturing jobs have been lost in Michigan under Trump, nearly 80,000 were created during the Obama-Biden administration. We're rating this one be careful because Biden splits his two numbers here. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the highest recorded number of jobs in Michigan during President Obama's two terms was about 43,000 auto manufacturing workers, which accounted for an increase of about 28,000 jobs added over those eight years. Biden could have been talking about the overall jobs lost and created, but this number seems way too high. Although what he said about the president's first three years is accurate. By April of this year, nearly 20,000 auto jobs had been lost. Finally, one last one from the president about Biden's son, Hunter. But where is Hunter facilitated the sale of a Michigan automotive company to a leading Chinese military defense contractor? Does anyone know that China's military got yet another piece of 
American manufacturing. We're calling this one be careful as well. According to reporting about this sale, Hunter Biden joined the hedge fund BHR Partners in 2013 as an unpaid advisory board member. In 2015, BHR helped a top Chinese aerospace company buy out the Auburn Hills Auto Parts Company, Hennigus Automotive, which had to be signed off by the Senate Finance Committee. Biden didn't join the board as a paid member until 2017, according to interviews with his lawyer. The Senate Finance Committee did subpoena Biden's travel records, but that was back in May. And so far, there hasn't been proof Biden facilitated any kind of deal, although he was with the fund at the time. Now, we also tested claims that both men made about the coronavirus. We'll have the portion of that story coming up in our 7 o'clock hour. We got a lot more coming up for you this morning, but first let's check back in with Andrew. Yeah, you're talking a lot of sunshine today, Andrew. Yeah, that's certainly right. We've got lots of sunshine as we go through. Excuse me for one second. Got to turn that mic on. As we go through uh, <laughs> the day go. today, we'll have some sunshine. It gets warmer, but yes, yeah, storms are showing up here on Storm Tracker 4. We'll talk more about that and your weekend forecast with my microphone on my tie in minutes. Ready or not, it's starting to feel like fall, and with that comes haunted house season. But how will this local horrifying haunt protect their guests from coronavirus? There's a lot of changes to help with crowd control, but still a lot more inside here that I guarantee you will make you scream. Find out why they say they're ready to scare you safely. We always keep everybody separated and we do that naturally. We should be fine. Join us Monday at 6 a.m. on Local 4 News Today.